ดีไซน์ยังยึดเจ้าอะไรไลฟ์สตรีมใช้ยมือเกของมันอายักบ้านเนี่ยเนาะตัวแต่ yes อายมือบ้านเปลยแบบพนามือตัวแต่เลยการพิธียังไงมีเนี่ยของมันมีอะไรได้จะสไลด์ยังไงนะสอนเย็บโอเคเย็บยังจะบองแชร์แต่เลยพี่พิมพ์สิโอเค When we have been a little bit late, I think you were already here. Two of them. Okay, we can begin now. Yeah. Okay. Uh, good. Uh, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the reflection. Uh, sorry for our technical error, and it have been uh, delaying the uh, time of uh, our live streaming. It took us like more than ten minutes to get there. So uh, uh, before we begin, uh, before before we begin uh, our conversations, I would like to brief a little bit on our program. The, the reflection is a discussion platform uh, for young Cambodian. Uh, in English, uh, during which they can share their own success story, experiences, uh, and also exchange their knowledge on various fields of expertise. And uh, our discussion topic today is on uh, uh, becoming a chevening scholar. So I, I chose this this topic as a, a now a, a application for chevening scholarship is already open and it will be closed early November. And here we bring in two. Scholar, to chevening scholar. Uh, first of all, we have Rod Sopana. Sopana uh, is currently is taking his master degree in the UK. And uh, another speaker is Pisei. Ung Chang Pisei. Pisei obtained a master degree uh, in international relation. I think you are you are a chevening scholar in 2019 and 20. And Panna is uh, 2020 and 21, so he's uh, uh, almost finishing him uh, his uh, study in the, the UK. Uh, without uh, further delay, uh, I would like to welcome our two speaker. Hi. Good. Hello. Good evening over there. <laughs> nice yeah. to meet you too today. It's been a yeah. while. Okay, that's great. Uh, welcoming you all. And I think uh, it's actually, as I mentioned, a topic on uh, achieving scholarship might not be uh, new. I think there are a series of, uh, of conversation, series of discussion and, and, and sharing a session on uh, preparing application, interview, uh, and also essay at some point. So we have been uh, seeing this being held so far. But today we have two speakers. We have two Mm -hmm. uh, alumni. So we hope to know more from you in terms of your practical experience and also your diverse uh, uh, knowledge on, 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 on different issues as well as how you prepared as, uh, as you are now uh, one is in the UK and one already finished uh, your, your, your study. So at least uh, we got more uh, knowledge in terms of preparing and people who wish to apply this year can, and can get to know more from that. Okay. All right. Yeah. So uh, let we begin our uh, conversation. So because of Chevening Scholarship is uh, is a UK funded scholarship and it provides support to students to study in the UK university for one year for master degree and uh, of course those who uh, get selected set to become future leader decision maker and also policy maker and also uh, they uh, they become an expert in their field of expertise. So uh, I would like to know from you, let me ask Panna first before I go to Pisa. Panna, uh, can you tell me why did you decide to apply for Chivening? Is there anything you want to tell us when it comes to applying for the scholarship? There are various of them. There are many of them out there that people can apply and get uh, to study, uh, for example, like Australia, in the, UK, uh, in the US or in European country or in Southeast Asian country or even in China. So why Chivening is your goal? All right, um, thank you for the uh, questions. So for me, Chevening has been 
it's not that um, I just saw it and then I applied for that. It started since I was like five years ago when I was like a reporter at a loyal, uh, ro local newspaper. I was a reporter. So back then I um, did an interview with uh, several alumni talking about uh, their stories, their preparations and stuff. So I was kind of inspired by their stories. So since then, I keep an eye on that opportunity to, uh, you know, to um, uh, see and learn more about that scholarship every year. And uh, that's not only the case that inspired me to, to uh, keep an eye on that scholarship, but UK has one of the um, success, uh, we can say that UK has one of the top performance uh, advertising industry, so uh, which is my uh, major that I'm pursuing right now. Um, it has, when it comes to marketing and advertising, UK has uh, one of the uh, most leading um, technology and innovations that um, is good for me to come here and learn about uh, those technology because uh, in marketing and advertising, um, uh, it changed very fast. You have to be up, up to date. You have to keep updated with the trend. You have to you know, be aware of the uh, technology that is coming right uh, now. So uh, for me, I, I personally choose UK because of that reason. Uh, but I'm, I don't, um, I, I'm not saying that UK is the best one when it comes to uh, pursuing your master. Uh, there's other, there's other countries as well providing the same opportunities. So it depends on your major actually, because some countries are famous for particular major. So it depends on your research. Um, it depends on your interest. It depends on um, your future career, whether uh, that uh, specific country can, you know, provide uh, what you really want, uh, especially to enhance your skill and also to uh, uh, contribute to your future career. So just ask yourself, what is your interest and what that country is famous for? And that's when you got to choose that country. I see. So more, more or less, it depends on uh, which major or the field, field of, of, of expertise you are wishing to uh, uh, master, right? Yes, correct. Yeah, you're okay. correct. Well, let me move to PSA. Uh, I think you also have made uh, your personal decision to choose Chivening as, as, as alumni. Uh, do, do you agree with Panna when it comes to selecting a uh, university, a course of study, as well as country where you aim to pursue your, ma your master's degree? All right. So uh, first of all, hello, uh, Onisai, and also Panna and everyone here. Um, back then, it was actually not a difficult decision for me to make uh, when choosing Chi Benning because I chose Chivening, first of all, because of the prestige of the scholarship itself. And second, it's um, Chivening was, you know, to me was the opportunity to have my dream come true. Mm -hmm. uh, that was to live and study in the UK, uh, which is home to many of the world's uh, top universities. Yeah. And I also agree with Panna, uh, you know, when you decide on a study course or a university you would have to take into consideration also like their expertise right and UK is also famous for um, diplomacy international relations and you know global politics and that's why I chose uh, to pursue my study in the UK through Chi Nice. that's that that also one of the important uh, elements when it comes to making the season. Yeah. I'll back to Panas again. Panna, uh, when it comes to achieving scholarship, if I'm not mistaken, there are two different uh, stages. First of all, it's application. And if you, uh, got to, uh, if you actually got selected for that, and then you need to go through another process which is interview, the final one. Is that correct? Or is there anything that I missed? Yes, you are correct. Yeah. OK. So to you, which one is the most difficult part uh, during the application process? If, if people who are, are watching here might want to know because they're preparing the application, sometimes they're first, uh, they're first time doing so, but some people might be doing it, uh, I'm not sure, but maybe second time or, or, or more, but at least you need to tell those who just prepared for the first time, uh, which one is the most imp uh, important and the most difficult for you? Um, I think both stages um, uh, are important, like equally. Mm -hmm. 
But if I got to choose one, um, which is the first stage, uh, the essay writing stage, is when you get to compete with lots of people, mm -hmm. um, more more competitive candidates. Um, you don't know what they expect, uh, their expectations when it comes to writing. Uh, as you may know that uh, Chivening require you to write four important essays, which oh. one of those uh, includes uh, networking, mm -hmm. which is a bit, uh, I find it um, a bit more difficult than the rest because most uh, scholarship that I've been like experienced with, they only ask you what is your motivation, what do you want to study, and mm -hmm. what is your future plan. Yes. But strangely, um, Chivening asked for one more, uh, you know, criteria, which is the networking uh, uh, qualification. So I need to do more a lot of research for that. Uh, I did YouTube um, watching blog from other like uh, successful candidates. Also uh, write, uh, also read the the blog uh, blog on their Chivening website, um, and so on, in order to get the idea, like, what do they mean by networking? So it is very difficult for me for that stage because you don't know what they really expect and you don't know whether what you write is um, is what they expect you to do. So it's kind of uh, challenging for me back then. And um, moving on to the interview stage is also challenging, but it trimmed down to less people which I find it more relaxed. Not that relaxed, it's just, it's more, it's intense, but in a way that you compete with less people mm -hmm. and you're reaching just one step further. So uh, just be confident in yourself at that stage. Mm -hmm. So yeah, for me, it's a writing stage is the most difficult one for me. And for those who uh, aim for applying for achieving scholarship this year, I recommend you do more research on what achieving uh, looking for in each um, essay. Uh, I believe there are some criteria that they mentioned. What is the good um, essays look like? What are the uh, criteria that they uh, uh, look in each essay? So you should read through all of that yeah. and make sure that you don't forget any point to include in those essays. That's great. Okay. Thank you. Uh, maybe I, I would like to ask a little bit more on uh, networking because I didn't know that and because I never tried to apply for it. But I want you to elaborate more on this point. Uh, maybe it, it might be helpful. How, how do you come up with the idea when it comes to writing something about networking? Is, is, is something that you want to tell specifically for our audience or watching here? So yeah, um, basically in, in our daily life, we are doing networking without realizing that we are making networks. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's just a matter of your reflection um, what kind of networks that you have uh, created and how you maintain a good uh, networks in order to benefit both parties. Um, I raise an example, like a few years ago, I interviewed one of the uh, achieving alumni that the process of build, building networks, but you don't really realize that it's building networking until one day when I start to uh, apply for achieving and then I approach him, to be my mentor uh, for my applications, then I realized that if it wasn't for networking, I would not be able to approach him personally to be my mentor. Oh, so okay. this kind of give you the idea that networking give you both a benefits in, in a way that you don't realize it, but it helped you both gain something out of that uh, networking. And it's not the matter of building it, it's the matter of like how you maintain it. I is the, the quality that they are looking for. That's great. Back to Pisay. All right, Bob. Pisay, have, have you found the same thing? I mean, when it comes to application process and interview process, if there are anything you see different, uh, I mean, in terms of difficulty? Right. Um, to me, the whole application process, it's challenging in different ways. And I couldn't agree more with Pana on the writing part because I also personally think that um, answering to the four essay questions, the hardest and also the most important as well. Mm -hmm. This is because it was the only uh, one chance that I had to make a good first impression and also to prove myself 
as an ideal candidate to championing before they could consider advancing me to the interview stage. Okay. Um, re regarding the networking question and also leadership question, there are two uh, different questions, but when you answer uh, those two questions, it's possible that you could make repetition. Mm. So I would recommend um, those who wish to apply for a Chimney scholarship to do clear brainstorming before you start, you know, putting down words because this is to avoid repetition. Okay. And different from Pana a little, uh, I found the question concerning uh, the cost, the study cost, uh, most challenging uh, among all those questions because there you need to identify your um, study courses and your universities and you need to do research so much research because and you also need to pay attention to the eligibility criteria of your chosen course uh, study courses and also your chosen universities as well and if you don't pay enough attention to those things um, I'm afraid that you would make you know uh, some not so favorable choices there because I experienced it myself. Um, I chose a university to study in the UK uh, without seeking clarification from school beforehand. Yep. So I applied and then they got back to me that, okay, um, bachelor's degree from Cambodia is not equivalent mm. to their minimum requirement. So you see, uh, I was given the opportunity to choose three co uh, study courses, but I missed one already. So mm. I had only two left. Nice. So yeah, my recommendation is that pay attention to the eligibility, uh, eligibility criteria of your chosen schools and your chosen uh, study courses as well. Mm. And also to start it earlier, the better. Yes, uh, preparation is key. So yeah, start as soon as possible. Okay, that's great. I want to add something as well regarding okay, to our yeah. uni. So um, yeah, just uh, as Bisei has mentioned that uh, the eligibility of your chosen course is really important. You have to do research uh, for that. If you're not um, uh, clear of some uh, uh, particular uh, points, you can email to their uh, yeah. website. It's very fast response. They're very like, um, you know, responsive. So I highly recommend if you're not sure of something, just email to them and send the document to verify with them whether you are eligible or maybe some school have some exception or, you know, they might consider you as one of the exceptional case. And just, just for example, but not all the cases are accepted. So it's, it's a matter of like you communicate with the school and ask them whatever you are, are not sure of. Yeah. Uh, interesting. Okay. Uh, what, what about interview process? Uh, if, you are, if you got selected, then uh, you will be prepared. How long do, do we, we have, I mean, in, in particular to prepare and then what kind of thing we should expect if we got selected to the next day? Uh, to any one of you can answer this question. Pisa, you want to go first? And now you might want to go first. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, I think uh, we all get notified for shortlisted um, during February, if I'm not mistaken. And then um, the uh, interview stage started from March, March to April. So you have like more, more than a month to prepare for the interview. So it's quite a lot of time as well, uh, like a month. So what you should prepare is to go back and read your application again, which is a must because you have submitted since last year, you might have forgotten what you've written in the application. You might uh, answer different from your, uh, you know, what you wrote, yeah. your, your dream might change or whatever. Mm -hmm. So you, you go back and read about that again and if possible, you have someone that you know through networking, you can ask him or her to do like mock interview or something. If it's like the worst case, you can just film yourself or you can like practice by yourself in front of the mirror or, you know, just prepare the expected questions. Um, some general questions like introduce yourself because that's the most important thing for the first impression. It's all about preparation. So um, 
I, I highly recommend it. You should uh, reach out to anyone that uh, you know that you feel comfortable to talk with, to ask about their experience, and then you are the one who decide what to follow or not follow. There's no universal rule that you should follow and then you will get selected. So yeah. it depends on yourself. Yeah. Be authentic, be yourself. Yes, All right. Beside, you might want to add something. Well, um, I would just have to add that be confident and be yourself. Mm. Uh, do prepare. Don't just go without any preparation. Of course, you need to do uh, some preparation. For example, um, preparing uh, preparing answers to some expected questions and also um, try to learn more about your field of expertise. Because during my interview, I also got asked questions um, concerning international relations, politics, because this is the field that I would be doing in the UK. And I, I also got questions like that. Yeah. It, it's more related to your field of expertise. Yeah. Be prepared for that. Okay. It seems like we got uh, some uh, important tip on that, and especially how we understand ourselves uh, better. Well, uh, we, we have discussed with, uh, well, uh, normally uh, some people uh, are also facing the same problem. For example, like they don't exactly know uh, themselves better. And then they, of course, many of us want to get this, the chance to study abroad, getting yeah. scholarship and so on. But the problem is they don't actually know themselves what they want or what they want to achieve after that. That's also a part of the problem when it comes to applying for scholarship. Because like I said, anyone want to get that kind of goal to see. Mm -hmm. uh, do you agree with this points, or do you think that there's something different from that? Because it's just, it's just like many people want to get scholarship, but it's also limited. And uh, at the same time, they just want it, but they don't exactly know what they want to study, what they want to achieve after that. Is that a, a problem that hinder uh, their capacity to get a, a scholarship. Uh, my question would be to precise first. Okay, so um, this is all about uh, self-exploration. When you start the application, you would try to get to know yourself better, to explore what you have done so far for the benefits of your community or for your country. I mean, before applying for achieving a scholarship, um, I didn't know much what I was doing. Well, I didn't regard anything that I did then as something special or something beneficial until I looked through the application and then I tried to think, okay, leadership. Well, nah, not really. Um, I was still in like, you know, a junior position. So nah, what is leadership actually? But, you know, you don't have to be in a leadership position, for example to apply for a Chimney scholarship, you have to define what leadership means to you, mm. right? And this is like a soul searching process and uh, you know, a process of uh, self -ex exploration. And if you want to get yourself well prepared for a Chimney scholarship, I would recommend like a few things. Uh, of course, you have the motivation, you have this goal of achieving a scholarship. And if you've got all things clear, uh, I believe that they would boost your motivation even more to try to know yourself better and try to see whether you would fit in for this scholarship. Yeah. So first of all, uh, try to observe the opening and closing dates uh, for achieving application. Mm -hmm. uh, this is to allow enough time for preparation, which is key. And also um, read through all the eligibility criteria. And when you have all of them ticked, start your application as soon as possible. All right. And third, I think uh, when you answer or construct your application, construct your answers to the essay questions on the application, that's when uh, you will find yourself. So just Demonst uh, demonstrate who you are, show your passion, vision, and be original. Mm, be original. Thank you, Pisay. Yeah. Uh, so, Panna, I might have different questions uh, to you uh, because uh, we cannot expect that any one of us can get it 
by doing it for the first time. Of course, some people might need to do it several times in order to get it. The scholarship is very challenging, competitive, and you need to be qualified for that. So uh, to you, if people who have tried maybe one or two times already, uh, is there anything that you want to tell them? Do not give up because uh, this only success uh, people can achieve is when they don't give up. So you might have something to share with them if they try to apply last year or the last, uh, I mean, uh, year before last year, but they lost hope to get to do it this year. Yeah, um, that's a very uh, good question, by the way. Um, there's so many people who uh, fail at their, their first attempts and then they start to lose hopes. I understand that because the process was quite long. It took almost a year to actually know what, whether you got in or not. For me, same thing. I was tired, I was exhausted. Like if I'm not making it this year, I might consider applying again. Like I question myself as well. But I highly recommend it if you are not successful this time, second time, there's other people who pass at their second attempt or third attempts or even fourth attempts. You have no idea how much they want it. And most of my people here, I know they even sacrifice their family to come here. Um, they left their baby at home and they left their family at home. So you know how much this opportunity means so much to other people. So don't take it for granted. You, while you still have chance, just grab it. Uh, you not make it this year doesn't mean that you are, um, you are, how can I say, is like less qualified than other candidates. It could yes. be uh, because of other reasons. Maybe your field has more people apply this year. Maybe there's more girls applying this year that maybe there's more guys, you know, you don't know the reasons behind. Yeah. So just keep being positive and keep trying. Um, and even though it's my first attempt to apply for achievement, but I fail other scholarships. I fail many exchange programs, but I never show it on social media. But <laughs> people just see it as like, oh, I, I did pass for every internship, or every exchange program, every scholarship, but you have no idea how hard I try behind the scene. Mm. So just keep going. If you really want it, fight for it. Yeah, true. <laughs> That's great, Pana. I think people who are watching this already got uh, the, the, the message behind why people should not give up on what they want to achieve. No matter how long you try, how many failure you already uh, try, and then how many times you're knocked down by something like that. So the failure does not determine what you are, you are going to achieve. Well, I think it's a part of uh, our discussion on uh, application itself and how to get selected people actually got to know a lot more about it but let me move to uh, your experience in the uk i think the most exciting thing is how you explore the society uh, european society of course and also away from home being uh, with friends and uh, i mean news people you have never and then also you communicate in, in, in international language uh, it is not going to be something that many people feel comfortable doing so so i i would like to know from you uh, be safe because you are you already uh, came here to work. Uh, I forgot to mention that PSA now is with Ministry of Foreign Affairs and International Relations. So uh, uh, sorry, yeah. interna uh, international cooperation. Sorry. So uh, you have a lot of things to do after returning from the UK. But I think your memory with the, uh, in the UK is still uh, I mean still alive until now. <laughs> but you might you might actually think of of your amazing thing that you experienced there. So if I ask you to describe your experience in the UK, can you summarize in one adjective? Anything that you think fit? Uh, superb. Okay. <laughs> and elaborate. Why do you choose that adjective for your experience? Well, it, it was overall amazing. Although half of my journey there was affected by the COVID-19, Still, I wouldn't, um, you know, trade the experience for anything else. You know, um, when I first arrived in the, the UK, I could enjoy like in class learning, meeting new people from different backgrounds, going to pubs all together, um, working in libraries um, until early morning and traveling all freely. So it was wow. <laughs> and then um, it was almost the end of my second semester already that COVID came and you know, 
the outbreak happened there, but still, um, it didn't really ruin my uh, journey there. Yeah. Um, the school started to move everything online. Uh, they have, you know, they put in place uh, measures very timely. Yeah. So we got access to all kinds of materials on online libraries to complete our work. And the government at that time, I also learned a lot uh, from them. The measures that they had uh, in place dealing with the COVID-19 outbreak uh, the first time, you know, at the very early phase. So uh, it was something I learned as well uh, throughout the journey. So I really appreciate uh, mm -hmm. our memories there. Yeah. Even though it is affected by the pandemic. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Back to Panna. You're still there enjoying life in the UK. Can you actually describe your life now being in the middle of a pandemic? And uh, also, of course, you must be missing home, parent, friend, and so because because it, it hasn't been so easy. I know that I understand the life during this time. Yeah, um, it's been very tough indeed. Um, this year, this, um, given the fact that I experienced the full lockdown here, the very like longest lockdown in the UK. Um, yeah, I actually uh, thought that I would be strong enough, like because I had experience um, traveling abroad uh, and stuff. So I thought that I would be strong enough to to come here and live alone and start a, 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 a new life here. Uh, gonna be a happy life and you know uh, start something new you know experience something new but it was not that uh, I expected it to be because of the pandemic um, I even made a video for that um, I experienced something which is uh, the loneliness which I don't I've never thought that I would use this term before in my entire life but mm -hmm. coming here I experienced that and um, I think it it was a big the biggest issue for me because it was so hard for me in making new friends. Um, uh, and, you know, um, about studying, you have to wear masks and go to, sometimes you have to do online. You don't even meet your, your friends, your teachers and stuff. You have nothing to do uh, during the lockdown here. Mm -hmm. So everything is cl was closed. Um, so it was hard to go through that process especially when it comes to food. Um, I have no idea how to cook, so I miss home food so much. I, I need to learn how to cook and I need to get my own groceries. I need to do uh, budget calculations. Um, so those kind of things that uh, teach me to be strong on my own. I don't need to rely on other people, but that makes me look back and see how strong I was. And the word resilience would describe my experience so much. Uh, wow. during this tough time but now it's getting better and I think I am enjoying it to the max right now because right now it's about time to go home as well uh, of course I miss home but I don't want to go back yet <laughs> 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah hopefully uh, in Cambodia um, the situation become better so yeah just hope for the best for Cambodia same, same, Pana and Pisa. So Pana was like, oh, there's loneliness here, but I don't want to go home. <laughs> <laughs> Before, yeah, but now not anymore, yeah. <laughs> well, I think, I think there's a lot of things we learned from, from you all. I mean, uh, as an alumni and a current a scholar in the UK. My, my uh, follow-up question, because I think too many one years too fast. Of course, uh, it's not only about study, but exploring one's society. You want to have more time enjoying your life with friends. You want to know more about society because you need, because I, I think that's quite intensive because you, you're staying here for, for one, you're staying there for one year. You need to complete a master degree. To you both, do you think that it's too short? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, you Anything. want to go first? <laughs> you, you complete it so you know how fast it, it is, right? Yeah. <laughs> so so you right. Know it's go too first. fast. Yeah. It's unbelievably fast. I see. So uh, how long should be long enough if you happen to have a choice? Two years. Two years? Okay. Yeah. Pana? I think one longer. Year. 
one year is already fast, but uh, yeah. plus the pandemic is even faster. Yeah. It's like you just close your eyes and then it's, you know, it's just one year already. Mm-hmm. So it was so quick for me as well, like very quick. Yeah, I want another year. <laughs> it's 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 the thing is that you have only one year um to do all your courses and also your dissertation as well and at the same time you also feel the need to explore to travel and stuff i think if we have i think if if if, if it's possible i would want to have probably six months for you know to do some internship there yeah. so we would also get some practical experience as well Mm-hmm. At the same time, we can also study and travel and explore because a year it's, it's too little. <laughs> yeah, you have to very like learn to balance things out. Yeah, Not gonna be too much in study. You know, you have to balance it. Mm, I see. Yeah. Well, regarding your life in the UK, uh, is there any challenges you 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 want to speak up? I mean when you, you're going there for the first time or you're staying there for so long. So, of course, there are different uh, challenges in, in, in for personal uh, individuals like you or Pisa you might have uh, during your stay in the UK. Uh, I think it should be Pisa first and then uh, back to Pana. Well, um, I had no problems uh, when I lived there. Um, I could interact hang out with people. But the thing is that um, I graduated from my bachelor's program perhaps a little too long. Mm. So I uh, got myself exposed to the work environment, you know, and then you got yeah. used to the work language and also all work stuff. Mm. And now that you got back to academics, yeah, yeah, yeah so it's it required a little effort mm. and also um, time. Yeah. But uh, I managed, um, I coped after all. Mm. Uh, and also uh, when it comes to the UK system, they will require you to, you know, do self-learning. They prioritize self-learning, critical thinking. So they want you to read so, so many things in a week in order to prepare for a seminar the follow uh, the next week. Mm. So right back to academics, back to also academic writing and uh, marking and everything. It was um, what to say. They expected a lot from you. Let's let's put it this way. I see. So that's why you need to try it. Uh, you needed to try even harder. I see. Pana, do you have different? Uh struggle during your stay in, in the UK, different from PSA? Well, I'm um, talking about academically. I think here, what I noticed um, was the difference that we might learn from the system is that in my school, they implement the uh, block teaching, where, for example, in a semester, there's four uh, subjects. So they only study like uh, Two, two courses uh, at the same time for one month, like intensively, intensively focus on that two subjects for that first one or one month and a half. And then after finish that, you will start another two. So it's, it's called block teaching. It's not that uh, we study four subjects at the same time. So I kind of uh, find it more interesting and more relaxing as well because you don't uh, focus on many uh, many subjects at the same time. You only focus on one or two things, which is more like uh, you super focus on it. But sometimes it's a bit too much because sometimes you study six hours tr- straight um, for that one particular subject, like three uh, three hours uh, lecturing uh, in front of your computer in front of uh, in your in your bedroom. It's kind of a lot of distractions going on in your room. So sometimes you are, you're hungry. Sometimes you you're <laughs> sleepy. Um, it's challenging for that online learning. Um, uh, but you have to learn with that. Um, you know, manage yourself to get yourself up and then, uh, start to uh, focus on the study and stuff. But there's a lot of distraction when it comes to online learning. Um, but so far, it's so not bad. Yeah, I managed to finish two semesters already. So right now that I only have one dissertation left to go, 
yeah. hopefully I can submit before the deadline, which is coming soon. <laughs> And personally, yeah, the main struggle I already discussed, which is their socialize things. Uh, it was a bit difficult when you first arrive. You don't, you have no friends. You don't have. You cannot meet each other outside. You cannot like. It, it's been a difficult first few months, but but now everything turns to normal. I enjoy it, and don't want it to end. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Come on, only one month left. <laughs> oh so, no! Don't remind me. <laughs> yeah. We can say congratulations. So uh, it's only a, a little bit of thing to finish before you get back. But of course, you might have time to explore a little bit more. Yeah, hopefully. Yeah. <laughs> well, I think if if uh, you were here, have any question to ask our speaker, please don't forget to drop your question on the uh, comment section, so we can actually read out for, for them to uh, answer. So uh, if there's no question now, I, I will need to ask more because our speaker might want to answer uh, more on the, the, the scholarship thing. Bisai, right, well. do you still uh, have anything to talk about uh, your, cha uh, your, your challenge in the UK and your study? How, how, what, what kind of strategy? I, I, I think I shouldn't, have, I shouldn't talk about strategy when it comes to study, but there might be some people who have their personal strategy to achieve their study within a, a specific time frame. For example, like one year is too fast, like we all agree, but how you, you, you actually manage to get all things done and back? Well, uh, when I first arrived in the UK, I was not familiar with the education system there at all. So um, during the first few months, I dare not travel anywhere. I focus like almost solely on my study. So I spend most of the time in uh, libraries, uh, reading, yep. uh, doing research. And I think, yeah, um, you know, trying and starting getting myself back to academics and stuff. And finally I managed and became uh, familiar with what the education there was all about what they wanted, for example, because the school there always encouraged uh, students to think outside the box, to have critical thinking, to have independent thinking, and also to always seek viable new means to addressing problems. Mm -hmm. So uh, I think you can improve um, your thinking and all the thing through reading. That's why uh, during the first few months, I did not travel a lot and I spent so much time in, in the libraries after my uh, seminar sessions. Mm, that's great. Yeah. Pana? Mm. I think... Uh, no, uh, I think I will have different question for you. Uh, you you talk about your your struggle there. You talk about your how you you find out uh, how to achieve the, the the study that you you're about to finish. But uh, have you found any? I'm, I'm not really sure what to say. But in what way the scholarship itself has changed you personally and intellectually? You talk about resilience yourself being there alone but intellectually uh, intellect, sorry intellectually speaking this is about your your capacity problem solving skill leadership skill like we say months and earlier have you noticed any change in that um yeah yes of course um when you asked that question i i did a lot of self-reflections what what have i got uh, because that is the sensitive questions that you 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 sometimes you don't dare to ask yourself but it's good to do some reflections uh, once in a while so that you know how you progress yourself especially yeah. in the academic um, journey um, so I can say that I am more confident when it comes to uh, my area which is the advertising industry yeah. uh, I got to, to know more a lot about the uh, digital marketing landscape here um, about digital tools they implement in their, um, you know, startups, their, their company. Um, I know a lot of other new technologies that they, they are doing right now, what are the latest one that they integrate with the marketing that we can, in the future, maybe implement it in Cambodia. So I'm so grateful for that uh, skill as well. That's what I expected to, to learn here. 
and also uh, I study about how to uh, plan and do strategy marketing like brand management and stuff all of those things that we don't really study in Cambodia that you know um, it's a bit broad when it comes to marketing but here it's it become more concentrated more specialized uh, within the the marketing uh, area is, yeah. so I gain a lot of skills in that particular area so yeah I I am thankful for that um, for that opportunity given by Chivening Scholarships that's great yeah thank you and I also uh, talk a lot about what he learns say also nonsense so uh, now we already uh, finished the part on uh, your experience and what you learned there let back to PSA again I think that would be the final part of our discussion uh, it's about the, the future uh, that you're going to well you all have a goals to achieve in maybe in the next five or next 10 years it's just about your personal uh, goal but at least you can inspire other people who are watching here. Maybe they're learning to understand their goal too. That's why they're planning to apply for the scholarship. So we say, you're now an, an official at the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, uh, but yeah. is there any specific plan or any, uh, maybe I could say uh, a grandmaster plan for you, <laughs> for your life or for your career uh, you want to do with your, pers uh, your, your personal capacity, your knowledge, and your leadership skill, uh, problem solving skill, and every skill that you can throughout your course and uh, your, your study in the UK. Uh, can you uh, actually share with us? Well, I don't have any master plan. Uh, okay. okay, so um, I believe you know already, like actually before going to the UK, I already worked for the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. Yep. So it was only natural for me uh, that I did international relations for my postgraduate study. And also with, you know, today's uh, persistent and new emerging challenges, uh, I believe the best way to address them is with a new mindset. Mm. And that's why I pursued uh, my higher education in the UK. And the education system there prepared me for just that. Mm. You know, like I mentioned earlier, how they encourage independent and critical thinking, you know, how to... Uh, see some see problems uh, from different lands so with all the knowledge and skills that i gained um, first of all i hope that i could use them to operate more effectively as a, a foreign service mm -hmm. official yeah uh, and of course uh, in the field of diplomacy and international affairs mm -hmm. and second i hope to share what i've learned as well I taught before at the Department of International Studies at IFO, and I only passed uh, recently because of uh, my commitment at the ministry. So if time allows in the future, uh, I will definitely return to academia again and to contribute to uh, developing human resources in international affairs. Mm -hmm. And I think last but not least, I also hope to contribute to promoting uh, women's participation in international affairs as well. Okay, that's great. First of all, improving myself and setting myself as a good example. Mm. Yeah. So you, you see yourself as a part of a, a more, I think it, what I should say, uh, a more energetics and a more vibrant uh, well, futures, maybe you're part of a foreign policy maker and so, so at least we have women here uh, and Hopefully. more of them will be coming. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> mm, spreading the knowledge, getting more people uh, into the sector and also mm -hmm. how you can help them achieve their dream and goals. Mm -hmm. But my one follow-up question, uh, if I ask you one thing, uh, uh, for example, like the challenge in foreign policy for women, is there anything you want to say? Or you have seen exactly uh, the challenge for you as a woman to be in this sector? Well, um, I think we have seen a promotion of women uh, participation in this sector already. Yep. But still, we would like to spur more, uh, you know, uh, participation from women in order to make it uh, a more balanced uh, space 
you know, and also uh, women would have different ideas that they could contribute to uh, making, you know, sound policy as well. Yeah, that's good. That's all. Back to Hanna. Mm -hmm. You're about to come back and you don't want to because you still have a lot of things to explore. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. is there anything you want to share with us? Maybe too soon to discuss, but at least you have something in mind. You, you, you tell me that you, you learn something new, you want to improve this, you want to improve that. But is there anything specific you want to you want to reveal now to our people, your friends, your family, or people who, who are watching this? Uh, yeah, that's a really big question, actually. Mm -hmm. um, uh, before I answer that question, so I would like to mention something a little bit about that future plan in general, because yeah. most of my, especially my marketing friends, they are curious of how I convinced uh, the scholarship to give uh, the scholarship for me to study marketing uh, in the UK. Yeah. Um, I can say that when I, before I apply, I also have the same stereotype that marketing should not be given the scholarship or maybe we have a uh, inferior qualification compared to other subjects you know where, because it benefits more into a corporate company and stuff yeah so um for me chivening doesn't really care about that and that's why i also chose chivening for that and when it, you look deeper into um, each uh, major or each field, it has positively influenced or impact to the society in their own way. Uh, marketing itself, you can apply to various uh, industry. You can apply it to a bank sector. You can apply it to hospitality. You can apply it to insurance company, which uh, in turn, you know, um, positively, you know, part of something in that industry as well. Mm -hmm. So. It's a matter of how you uh, use that skill to, to work uh, for. So I just want to encourage people to, if you really want to pursue that degree, don't think that uh, it's not deserve a scholarship. Just, uh, um, just do a self-reflection that what you're going to do with that and what do you really want to know about that uh, uh, sector. So when you know yourself clearly and how you get the skill and then come back um, implement a skill to to impact the uh, your community is when they believe and trust in you and give the fund to you to study that and yeah. uh, one more important information is that uh, Chivening Scholarship also have a partner from a corporate company which is the IMB Foundations and Prudential so those are uh, two company are uh, corporate uh, you know foundations but they do some CSR to support the scholar to study in the UK so I was the an, an, an example that was uh, sponsored by CIMB Foundation. So um, don't uh, be hopeless regardless of your major, just try your best to understand what you really want and what is your clear future plan. Yeah. And uh, coming back to me, yeah, uh, yeah the, the plan is keep changing because uh, you know, the, the COVID-19 is really impacted to the, the industry so much. So uh, for now, I just go back and uh, continue working on myself, uh, build a skill, advertising skill, communi uh, communication skill. So perhaps I would go back and work as an advertising agency mm -hmm. again, so I can expose to various uh, different kind of projects, different kind of uh, in industry to, to gain more about practical stuff. And when I get enough uh, experience, I also wanted to be someone who uh, shared uh, the knowledge back to, uh, especially I'm so interested in youth empowerment. So I might want to be not I might want to be, I want to establish that course because we don't have that specific digital marketing course at the uni. So it's good to have that course and uh, teach about uh, to uh, uh, later generations about what is marketing mm -hmm. and prepare them for the future career because uh, marketing in Cambodia, we don't really have that specific course. We only have like a media management, which is a bit broad for them. So yeah. I want to have something more uh, concentrated so that uh, when uh, later generations come come in, they can have a, a path to to go forward. If whether they want to pursue to be, um, you know, public relations, uh, PR, um, or um, marketing or uh, journalist, they could choose their pathway. So I just want to give 
them that options to go for. Um, if possible, I want to be a lecturer as well, like, um, you know, someone who share their life story and empower youth to, to never uh, give up their, their dreams, to keep chasing yeah. their dreams. Mm -hmm. So that's my current plans right now. And in the very, uh, the long future, not that long, when the COVID ends or something, I might find someone who have the same vision. Maybe we can establish something like a very local company focus on brand building and advertising as well, because we know that we have a lot of agencies right in Cambodia, but mostly are owned by foreigners and even uh, uh, the, the, the head and the, the manager level are uh, work by like are employed by the uh, foreigner. So we still need a lot of Cambodian resource in that skill, uh, in that sector as well. Mm -hmm. So that's pretty much my plan, plan right now. There's a part of it is uh, youth empowerment. Yes, that's my field of interest as well. Yeah. If I, 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 if I, I ask you, why is that matter for the society like ours? Youth empowerment. It's very important indeed because uh, we, we in a, an era of digital, you know, social media and stuff, they yeah. could be influenced in a bad way if we don't uh, really educate them, um, you know, show them the path that uh, we've been through. So it's good that they are young, they are easy, they are easy influenced by, um, you know, the older generation. So you, you, you could be a good example so that when they grow up, uh, they follow your footstep or they follow a good thing. So they have more creative ideas and, you know, just to inspire them to love the, your society, to do something good, uh, to contrib contribute back whatever you can. So I, I trust uh, Cambodian youth are very potential. We just need more opportunity so that we can be you know, as competent as other, you know, um, uh, yeah, teenagers or uh, youth in other country as well. Okay, that's good. Isai, do you agree with Panna on when it comes to youth empowerment? Uh, yes, I totally agree that youth empowerment is, is it's important. Um, as for myself, um, I always look up to, you know, who people, who did great, who achieved big things, who, um, you know, got this scholarship and that scholarship when I was younger. And those people, uh, they were my role models then. And they empowered me to be me today. Yep. I could achieve so much um, because of them as well. And I think spreading good messages, spreading opportunities, those are key uh, to empower young people. And right, we need youth empowerment for uh, the development of our country. Give them more opportunities, uh, more energy and more positive messages. Thank you. Well, that's why I think you, you both can be the mentor for people who seek to uh, prepare their application this year. That's why we invited you too in this program. And uh, I, I hope that uh, our audience out there who are preparing or maybe trying to understand the scholarship, trying to understand themselves, will seek help from you. And uh, we have uh, contact information in our uh, uh, post on Facebook. So if you uh, need to contact both of our speaker, please don't hesitate. Uh, they will be uh, welcoming and uh, friendly. Of course, they will help you uh, have guide, uh, guide you through all the process. So if you don't have question uh, right now, you can approach them and ask later. Well, I think that that should be uh, the end of our conversations, but I just want to uh, uh, give a, a, a wrap up, like uh, everything our speaker has mentioned here is not a magic tip. That could, that could help you uh, eventually get a scholarship. If uh, you need to understand yourself, you need to try your best, be you, persistent, consistent. Uh, uh, you need to have a perseverance and so on. So uh, our speaker have told you all the things, uh, how to prepare along the way, get yourself ready for that as, long as, as, as soon as possible. And you also know how mm -hmm. life in the UK would be during your study. Uh, but I think uh, there's a lot of to say if we happen to discuss more, but uh, you can talk individually to our speaker. Again, 
Thank you so much, Pana and uh, Pisay. But I, uh, before we end this, I think each of you will have 30 seconds to say something to our audience and to those who are preparing their application now, or uh, they want to hear something as the final message from you all. So let's begin from um, Pana and then Pisay. Um, well, I just want to say something that to those who are uh, aiming for applying for this year, either this year or later, just don't be, don't doubt yourself, just uh, keep trying, uh, do more research, approach uh, people, um, try your best and just don't give up. And especially those who are in their um, university, you can uh, start to prepare yourself from now on. Maybe you can look up the website and see what do you need pre to prepare for now. Maybe you can uh, start from now on. Uh, it's never too early to, to be prepared for that scholarship. So I just wanna wish them all the best and hope to see you in the uh, shortlisted. I am willing to help you out if you are uh, having my contact. So just feel free to reach me anytime. Thank you so much. Thanks, Pana. He say your turn. Right again. Um, I would like to specify that preparation is key. So please start your application as soon as possible, and also don't hesitate. Don't hesitate, and don't doubt yourself. Just give it a try. You never know. And keep fighting for it if you want it. Uh, I would be more than happy to help if you have any questions at all regarding how to apply for a Chinese scholarship. You have my Facebook. Please uh, feel free to reach me anytime. So thank you. Thank you, both speaker. Again, ladies and gentlemen, uh, this is the end of our conversations. But uh, our we will be uh, announcing our uh, upcoming topic. But we surely will focus on the educations and uh, environments, uh, social development, skill, and so on. So keep your eye on our page, and we will update it uh, very soon on our upcoming topic. Again, uh, Panna and Pisay, thank you so much. Uh, please thank be safe. Um, thank you as well for having us. Yeah, yeah thank you for having us, Tom. With pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Bye.